Hello, well, this is Hellbent, and welcome back to part 5 in the If Statements tutorial. Uh, we're just going to carry on from where we were in the last one. So the first thing I'm going to do is comment out the last thing we were working on. And we're going to move on to and and or. <clears throat> Let me get myself organized. Okay, so sometimes you're going to want a con your if statement to test more than one thing, and you're going to want everything within that to be true in order for the if statement to execute whatever you have it doing. So we're going to show I'm going to show an example, a couple examples of that. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is come up with a couple variables. So let's go with name. And so I have a variable that I've called name. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. And I'm going to have another one that's age. And I'm also going to leave that blank. Um, next, I'm going to create a variable that I am going to actually put a, a value into. Kind of like how we did with the password. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this my name. Well, And I'm going to have it equal hellbent. Okay, and I think I'm okay with that for now. Um, next, we're going to have an input box. So that way we can get a user input. And we're going to call this, um, we're going to store the value of name into here. And then we're going to say, Please enter your name. And then we're going to sleep for half of a second. And then we're going to have another input box to get another value. <clears throat> I have a little bit of a cold. My ears are a little bit clogged up. I can hear an echo in my head. Um, we're going to call this age because we already have assigned that. And... Please enter your age. We're going to sleep again for another half second. And now what we're going to do is create our if statement where we use an and in it. Okay, so let me do this. So the first thing we're going to check is if our name is equal to our... And we're going to do it the same way we did the, with the password. So it's going to be equals equals. And if we're going to check to see if it equals my name. Now that we have that, what we're going to also want is, in order for this to be true, we want another thing to be true within this if statement. So the way we do that is we say ampersand, ampersand, and then our next variable, which is age. And we don't really care what the age is for this example, so we're going to say um, as long as it does not equal null. So as long as they've entered some value into this, it's going to ring true. And we are going to have it say message box. And we'll just say both name and age are, I don't know, entered. No. True. They're both true. Okay, and I think we just need an else. And we'll do another message box. And we'll say at least one is false. Okay, and I think we're good, so we'll just save 
that and run it. <clears throat> so I'm going to enter an incorrect name, which is just uh, hellbent with all lowercase. And then for age, I'm just going to put 22. And it says at least one is false because one of these values didn't ring true. And we can tell that because we did enter a value in there, we know that it's the name that was false. So let's do that again, but this time we'll enter it correctly. And 11. And it says both age and name are true. Okay, so this is and. And you can do multiple things in this. You can add, like, you can continue to add more ands. So the more things you add into it, the more things that have to be true in order for it to execute that. So you can get you can get quite long um, and have many conditions that have to be tested. So with that out of the way, we'll go on to or. All right, and Control Q to comment that out. And we're going to create some new variables. Uh, let's go with score. And we're going to set a value of 0. And we're going to have answer 1 equals um, cow. And then we'll do another one. And we will, let's say, um, let's get an input box in here. And what are we going to call this? Let's call this, let's go back to our user input. We'll call our variable user input. And we're going to have more than one, so we'll call this user input one. And we're going to ask a question. We're going to say, what what animal says moo? And then we're going to sleep for a half of a second. And then we're going to ask another question. And we're going to call our variable user input to. And we're going to ask what animal, I suppose it doesn't really say this, but that looks a little better to me. Okay, and then we'll have another sleep command. Okay, so now what we need, we're going to do is we're going to have a bunch of if statements that are going to check to see how many of these questions the user got right. So we're going to say if user input one equals answer one. You know what, to say, make this a little easier for me to type it out, I'm just going to do it that way, without the underscore. <clears throat> okay, so if user input equals answer 1, okay, so if the answer is correct, and, which is ampersand, ampersand, if user input 2, user input 2, okay, equals answer to we're gonna have a message box and 
it's going to say you got both questions correct and then we're going to take our score variable which is currently zero and we are going to say score score plus equals two so we're adding the two to the value of score or in other words of saying it it's score equals score plus two okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to check if, if they only got one of the answers right and that's where our or is going to come in so if user input one equals answer one or which is the pipes or the this you see the slash there it's if you hold shift on that so I've heard people call it pipes I don't really care what it's called it's the straight line I hit two of those and that means or so either one of these things these conditions only one of them has to be true in order for the if statement to be executed so user input two if user if user input one equals answer one or if user input two equals answer two it's going to execute this if statement and inside of here we're going to have a message box and you know what I think here I actually want an else yeah I definitely need an else there so it's else if not just if okay message box and we're gonna say you got at least one you got at least one question right and we're gonna take our score variable and we're just gonna add one to the value of it so we can either we can do a few things like I said we could do score equal score plus uh, one or we can do score uh, plus equals one or we can just do score plus plus which means add one to the value of score and we can actually just do it like that as well okay and then we're gonna have else so basically if they got none of the questions right we're just going to have a message box and we're just going to we're going to say okay and since we're not we don't need to add anything to the score because they didn't get any answers correct we can just do it like that okay um the next thing we want to do is after all of that we're just going to sleep for a half of a second just to make sure that there's no problems and we're going to print out a message box with our score message box and we want we're just going to say you got you got a score of and then we're gonna have our variable which is our score and we're gonna wrap that in percentage signs so we're gonna say the score variable and you got a score of that out of two and I think that is all we need okay so let's save that and run it okay so what animal says moo we're just gonna go and answer both of these correct the first time so we have cow what says bark we have a dog and it says we got both questions correct and we got a score of two out of two let's run that again let's get one of the answers wrong so let's say cat a cat says moo let's say a dog says bark 
and we got at least one of the questions right and our score should be one out of two. Now let's do it again where we say a cat says moo and a cow says bark. You got none of the questions right and you got a score of zero out of two. Okay, so that's and and or. So like I said, with our or, only one of them had to be true in order for us to get it to execute the if statement. Um, with the and, both of them had to be true in order for it to execute that one. And with the else, it's as long as none of the other things rang true, it automatically goes to the else. <clears throat> and that is it for that. Okay, um, let me see my time. We're up to 15 minutes, so I think that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy it, if you learned something, be sure to hit that like button, and we'll be back with part six shortly.